after that, went home and I have a Christian friend who has been part of my life since I was born. She was our neighbor growing up. And she, I told her about my experience. I was like, listen, I went to church and I couldn't stop crying. Why am I crying? Am I just emo? What is my issue? (laughs) (laughs) And she told me that's the Holy Spirit. And I, I recognize the Holy Spirit's been in scripture, you know, through and through. He's been there since the beginning of time. But I, I think in Jewish circles, Mm -hmm. you don't really reference God using the term, the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's an interesting point is I wanted to ask sort of the difference in perspective around God because they don't believe in a Trinity. Mm -hmm. Um, So what is there? Like, is it just God, the father? Yeah. So it's, you know, God, the father, but they also typically refer to God as Yahweh. Mm hmm. And or Elohim. So there's other terms they use for God. Yahweh is like the holiest term for God because I I'm believing people don't come for me, but I'm actually believing. So we'll see that Yahweh is how, you know, God introduced himself to Moses at the burning bush. But he said, I am, but Mm -hmm. translated to Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. And they don't see the full name because it's just so sacred and so holy. So they they refer to God as God the Father, and I think they talk about you know ruach, which I believe is the like wind of God, the breath of God. So there's mm-hmm. different ways they talk about God, but definitely not you know Yeshua or Jesus, yeah, Holy Spirit. At least not what I had heard. And that's an interesting contrast too. That when you believe in the Holy Spirit and um, the Spirit that can indwell you and you can feel him and feel his presence it gives you a different closeness to god than just believing in a just the god the father part of the trinity yes that's such a good point too because they also we have the holy spirit because christ dwells within us when Mm -hmm. we receive christ we receive the holy spirit but they don't believe that that's how that is typically if we're going back to Old Testament, which is what, you know, our Bible, the Old Testament of the Bible is the Torah. Well, the first five books of the Torah, but then, you know, the rest of the stories are also part of Judaism. Mm -hmm. And so they still typically would go to the temple to hear from God. It's not like Mm. they have the Holy Spirit that just dwells within them. And we have access to God in that same sort of way because they Mm. don't have Christ as their savior. Think about like how you live your life differently under those two different mindsets too. So true. So true. Like knowing the Holy Spirit dwells within me and empowers me because the same spirit that raised Christ from the grave is (laughs) in me versus feeling I need to jump through hoops to prove myself good enough to then get to hear from God, to get direction for my life. Like even just thinking that way makes me feel I could never be good enough. And the truth is, we can't. We're not good enough for God. We're justified by faith in Christ. Yes. He's good enough. Amen. I want to get back to your story, but while we're kind of on this this topic of, you know, just kind of talking about some of the differences between Judaism and and Christianity, um, you just brought up a really good point too of like the hoops you have to jump through. How do Jewish people believe that you're saved? Like what is their perspective of, of heaven and hell? Or do you, do you know that? Okay. So I think there's a lot of different views on it. And this is interesting too. Uh, we could talk for hours or so <laughs> much, but this is interesting too. I think one theory is purgatory, sort of like a holding place. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, in Catholicism, that's a big yeah. thing. So I think it's this idea of a holding place where maybe you kind of suffer the way that you had other people suffer at your expense on earth and you eventually atone for it to then be able to get to heaven. Okay. I never personally heard someone talk to me about hell. Yeah. So I don't know if any of them believe in hell or okay. what what their thoughts are on that but I know that I've never heard people talk about hell but yet in Job Satan and God are having a conversation that's old testament 
Mm. And I'm like, so then who do they think Satan was? So I don't really know. Yeah. But another key thing too is that a lot of Jewish people don't actually believe in God. Like they're mm. Jewish because it's part of their culture. Oh, right. And a big thing too is, you know, because of the Holocaust and everything that happened, it's like, I could never like, I'm Jewish and that's what my, you know, ancestors or cousins or grandparents or, you know, suffer through, which is a horrible thing. Obviously the Holocaust was terrible, yeah. but because of that, there's this stronghold, like, oh, I would never walk away from Judaism to accept Christ. But yet in my perspective, accepting Jesus as your savior is the most Jewish thing you could ever do considering mm. Jesus was Jewish and all of the early disciples were Jewish and it Ooh. says he came first for the Jew, but then was rejected by the Jewish peoples, so then went for the Gentiles as well to be grafted in. Wow. So Jesus is the most Jewish thing that you could do. You're not leaving your Judaism. You're fulfilling it in Christ. Oh, I feel like you just set someone free in that. Amen. <laughs> so I love to like that you mentioned that you'd never heard of hell because I have um, a Jewish friend who her family was Orthodox Jewish. So like hardcore Jewish. She, she has to live up to some strict codes in her life. And I, I, I've realized that she kind of lives a bit of a double life away from them because she doesn't want to disappoint them because the mm -hmm. rules are so strict um, in Orthodox Judaism. But I was talking to her a bit about heaven and hell and salvation. And, and she basically told me like a similar thing that um, there's no hell, but there's different levels of heaven. And so their perspective is like everybody goes, but if you aren't close to God, you're at like the bottom level of heaven. Um, so it was like a whole new, like I'd never heard of that. or And I don't know, like if there's Jewish people listening to this, maybe you know more about you know, what the, tr the traditional Jewish, Jewish perspective is on this. And you want to comment it and inform us of, you know, what that is. But yeah. So I remember like researching like the levels of heaven and I know in the Bible there it's talked about like, there's three levels of heaven somewhere. I don't fully understand all of that. Um, but yeah, so basically according to her belief that there was no, there was no hell, um, just, mm -hmm levels of heaven. Um, and I can kind of understand that too. I've been wondering how I feel about hell and just really coming to, to feel like it is just the absence of God, you know, yeah. but there is a lake of fire that, uh, Satan and the demons are definitely going to be thrown into because scripture says that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of mystery in that. Yeah. So, so true. And I want to share something about that too, really quick while we're yeah. on it, because it, just completely shifted the way that I go about evangelism and the way that I deeply care for people now. Mm -hmm. But yes, hell is the complete absence from God because everything good is from God. And if you're in hell, you chose to not live for God. And so one, I hear people say, well, why would a loving God send people to hell? Mm -hmm. Well, for one, God's not sending you to hell. You're choosing to go to hell. He's not making that decision for you. You're making the choice. If you don't want to spend for lucky enough to live 80 years here on earth, if you don't want to spend 80 years here in the presence of God, if you don't want to give any part of your life here to God on earth, which is temporary, why would you even want to spend eternity with him if you're not making the choice? Yeah. Now? So God's exactly. not sending you to hell. You're sending yourself there. And also when you think about hell, it talks about, what does the Bible say? God gives rest to his beloved. Think about sleep, physical sleep. We get physical sleep because mm. of the graciousness of God. There's no sleep in hell. You are exhausted. And not only that, the Bible says that your soul is weary. Why? Because he says, come to me, all you who are weary mm. and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So not only are you physically exhausted, you're spiritually exhausted because you're yeah. departed from God. You're yeah. not eating good food. Like it talks about the feasts and it talks about how eating is a joy. I could go on. I know that's yes. a part, you know, the Judaism story that I got going on here. But I'm no just, fire. I'm just passionate about it. Like everything good is from God. And yeah, it says oh, there's just so many things that maggots eat at you and you continually don't die. Because you don't have life in the first place. Yeah. So you're constantly being like eaten alive. 
but yep. not dying. You're constantly being tormented, tormented by demons because you're departed from God. But when you're in a relationship with Christ, he looks at you when you get to the gates and you're justified because he sees Christ through you. Mm -hmm. And so it's not works, it's by faith.